Hey, this is Mr. Janes, and this video will be using similarity and proportionality to solve geometric problems. We'll start by talking about how we can use angles to do this. If two figures are similar, their angles are congruent, meaning they have the same angle measure, congruent. Well, how will that work in this kind of problem right here? Well, this first problem states that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC, that angle D is 20 degrees, angle E is 100 degrees, and angle B is labeled with X. Well, how can we solve for X here? Well, remember, these two triangles are similar, and so their corresponding angles will be congruent. Since B is the second letter of this congruent statement, and E is the second letter of this congruent statement, angle B is congruent to angle E, which is 100 degrees. So, X equals 100 degrees. Now that you've seen one example of how we can use similarity and angles to solve a geometric problem, go ahead and try the second problem by yourself. Pause the video here. The answers will be coming up in 3, 2, 1. Since triangle LMN is similar to triangle RQP, the first letters L and R show that angle L is congruent to angle R. So angle R is also 90 degrees. In addition, angle N will be congruent to angle P. So since angle P is 30 degrees, angle N is also 30 degrees. Now angle M, which is X, will be congruent to angle Q, but neither of those are labeled. However, I do remember that all the angles in a triangle should add up to 180 degrees. So all I need to do is add the other two angles, 90 and 30, to get 120, subtract that from 180, and I'm left with that both angle Q and angle M are 60 degrees, and so X equals 60 degrees. Next, let's take a look at how we can use sides to solve similar geometric problems. If two figures are similar, then their sides will be proportional. This means that the ratio uh, between any two corresponding sides will be the same as the ratio of any other two corresponding sides. Let's see how this works out in this first problem here. You'll notice it's very similar to the problem we did in the previous set. We have the same triangle similarity statement. Triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEC. And we're asked to solve uh, to find out how long X is from C to D. We'll start by writing down X right here. Let's see if we can write a ratio uh, and then a proportion using X. Well, we know that X is from C to D, uh, so the corresponding side on the other triangle is C to A, which is 3.4 centimeters. So the ratio of X to 3.4 should be the same as the ratio of any other two sides. So for example, uh, let's see, D to E is 4.5 centimeters in the larger triangle, D to E, and that corresponds to AB, which is three centimeters in that smaller triangle. So we have the ratio X over 3.4 equals 4.5 over three. If it helps you, you may want to color code the corresponding parts in each of these two triangles. I've done that right here with red and blue. I've also marked the corresponding letters of the statement, and it even marked the corresponding parts in my ratio. Now, this video will not cover how to solve a proportion. If you need help with that, please consult one of the previous videos or find help a different way. But for now, pause the video, solve this proportion, and find out what X is. The answers will be coming up on the screen in three, two, one. And the solution is X equals 5.1. Now this next problem is a little bit tricky. We're given that triangle JKL is similar to triangle JMN, and we're asked to find the value of Y. But it seems like the two triangles here are overlapping. So what I'll do is I'll take out a highlighter and highlight the two different triangles so I know where they are. I'll do it on this video. I suggest you do it on your own paper. Identified the smaller triangle JKL uh, with a yellow highlighter, and the larger triangle JMN with this green highlighter. And as I said before, I suggest you do this for yourself. It'll make things a lot easier to see. So let's start trying to write our ratio now. I'll start with the variable y right here. Again, I'm gonna do a little more color coding with the, with the colored pencil or different highlighter. What does y correspond to on the other triangle? Well, it seems to correspond to 7.5, right? I mean, y is m to n, and uh, 7.5 is k to l. Those are both the last two letters, and, and it kind of looks like they correspond, right? They're both the bottom of that triangle. So I can do y over 7.5. All right, now I need another side uh, to work with here. I could use this, this 37.5 side, but there's no other information given 
uh, about the smaller parts there. So I'm not going to use that side. Instead, I'll use this side over here. Let's see, what kind of ratio can I write? Well, the smaller triangle, let's see, from j to k, that's 9. So that 9 should go with 7.5 on the bottom. So it's a smaller triangle. I've, I've started putting those values on the bottom. But what about the larger triangle? Should I use 13.5 on the top? Because 13.5 goes with y? The answer is no, you should not use 13.5. When we're looking at the smaller triangle, 9 is the length from j to k, the full side of the smaller triangle, j to k. But the full side of the larger triangle isn't just 13.5, not just k to m. It's this whole thing from j all the way to m. If you look at the similarity statement, you'll see that j all the way to m corresponds to j to k on the smaller triangle. So we need to add 9 and 13.5 together to get 22.5, 22.5, which means I can use 22.5 in my ratio, 22.5. Just to review, remember I use the bottom of the yellow triangle, so I use the bottom of the green triangle, those correspond. And then if I use the side of the yellow triangle, I've got to use the whole side of the green triangle. That's where the 9 and the 22.5 come from. All that's left now is to solve this proportion. Go ahead, pause the video, and solve this for yourself. The answers will be up in 3, 2, 1. The final answer of y equals 18.75. Next, let's talk about a similar theorem called the side splitter theorem. The side splitter theorem states that if a line is parallel to one side of a triangle and intersects the other sides, then it divides those sides proportionally. Now this is very different than the previous problems we were just doing. If this were like the previous problems, we would say that the ratio from QR to QX is equal to the ratio from QS to QY, which is also equal to the ratio from RS to XY. That's because we were comparing the overlapping sides of two similar triangles. However, this is not what the side splitter theorem is about. Instead, the side splitter theorem creates a proportion using parts of the sides of this triangle. It states that the ratio from XR to RQ, right there, is equal to the ratio from YS to SQ, right there. Since we're not using the entire triangle, and this does not depend on those similar triangles, the side splitter theorem does not use the lengths of the two parallel sides. Let's see how the side splitter works in this first practice problem here. We've got to find what the variable x is from s to t. Now the side splitter theorem says that I can write a ratio from this smaller part of the triangle to this smaller part of the triangle from x to 16. And that should be proportional to the corresponding sides on the other side of the triangle. From t to u is 5, that matches with x, and from u to v is 10, that corresponds with the 16. At this point, the solving's up to you. Go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can find that answer. It'll be up in 3, 2, 1, and you should end with x equals 8. This could also be done quite quickly by realizing that the top portion of the triangle is just half of this bottom portion. 5 is half of 10. And so 8 must be half of 16. x is 8. Let's take a look at this next problem here. I need to find out what the value of x is, so I'll start with x. Now, here's x, but I've got nothing labeled from j to l for it to correspond to. However, I do know that j to n is 37.5. So I'm actually going to have this side correspond to the whole side of 37.5. So I have x over 37.5. Now the side splitter theorem allows me to do that as long as I use the corresponding parts on the other side of that triangle. So x corresponds to 13.5, and that 13.5 goes with x. Uh, the, I can't use the 9 though. The 9 doesn't correspond to the 37.5 that I used before. Instead, I've got to find the value of this entire side, and we did that in the last problem. Turns out to be 22.5. So I'll finish my ratio with 13.5 over 22.5. There is also a slightly different way of writing this proportion. 
Let's say you did want to use this number 9 up here from j to k. Well, we'll start by writing our uh, first ratio of x, but now I'm going to use this segment here from j to l. It's not labeled, and there's no good way of figuring out how long it is with just a, a, a number. But we could write an expression. I know that whatever this length is from j to l, it's going to have to be 37.5 minus whatever x is from l to n. I'll take that away to figure out what j to l is. So let's write an expression for that. So that's 37.5, but I'll have to take away x. And I'll use that uh, to correspond to x. So I've got x over 37.5 minus x. Okay, so this part to that part, and then my other ratio will have to be 13.5, because that corresponds with the x, to 9 because that now corresponds with this smaller part up here that I've labeled as 37.5 minus x. Now remember, since I'm not using the whole side of this triangle, and I'm not using these two triangles as two similar triangles, I can't use the 7.5 or the length of mn in this problem. That's part of the side splitter theorem. If I'm using the, just the bottom part here, I can't say that that corresponds to either of these sides, so that's not an option of solving. Now either way you've done the ratio, either this first way or the second way, Go ahead and solve it. Uh, you should get the same answer, and that answer will be up in 3, 2, 1, and x equals 22.5. Lastly, let's take a look at the side splitter corollary. The side splitter corollary states that if three parallel lines intersect two transversals, then the segments intercepted on the transversals are proportional. Now, this is very similar to the side splitter theorem. In fact, the word corollary is a, a theorem or mathematical rule that is kind of an additional one that kind of adds on to the, the previous theorem. So again, it's very similar. Here's how it works. It says that the ratio of AB to BC is equal to the ratio of DE. Three of these lines are parallel. Then these two segments of that transversal is proportional to the lengths of those two segments. Now you might even notice that this is starting to look like the side splitter theorem. In fact, if you were to extend the two transversals and write ratios using these two sides that I'm labeling right now, we would have the side splitter theorem. And just like the side splitter theorem, and just like the side splitter theorem, we will not be able to use the lengths of these parallel sides. We could only do that if we had two full similar triangles, such as perhaps this one I'm highlighting here and uh, this one I'm highlighting right here. But unfortunately, we won't even have a triangle for these problems, just three parallel lines and two transversals. So let's see how this works with this problem right here. Starting with our variable x, and I'll write the ratio of x to 4, okay, is equal to, now this corollary says that, let's see, x is going to go with 5, those correspond, 5, and then 5 over 6, because 4 and 6 correspond, so 5 over 6. And that's all there is to it. There's our ratio. Uh, go ahead and try and solve that. The answers will be up in 3, 2, make sure you've paused. Here it is. Plus 3.33 or 3 and 1 third. For this next problem, I'll start with z right here. Z. Uh, but there's nothing in, in this small segment that's labeled. There's two ways we can handle this, just like in a problem we did earlier. We can compare this part to the whole length, 25. So z over 25. Now that will be equal to, z corresponds with 12, so 12. But we can't use 8. Since we use this whole length in the first ratio, we'll have to use the whole length here. 8 plus 12 is 20, so 12 over 20. That's one way of doing this. The other way is to come up with an expression for this length right here. Since the whole length is 25, and this part is z, to figure out what this length is, I would have to take 25 and subtract z. So the expression for that will be 25 minus z. After that, your proportion should fall into place. z over 25 minus z corresponds to 12. No matter which proportion you like, go ahead and solve it. The answers will be up in 3. So z turns out to be 15. And if you want to check your work, you could do 25 minus z. 25 minus 15 is 10. 10 plus 15 is 25. And it looks like everything here is proportional. I hope you've learned something about using similarity and proportionality to solve geometric problems. In case you've forgotten, remember, using angles is pretty straightforward, they're all congruent, but when it comes to sides, they're always proportional.